Uh, I now uh, recognize uh, uh, Chairman Rokita for five minutes. Thank you, Chairwoman. Yes, I have to agree. <laughs> we have a lot of witnesses sitting in those chairs, and, and uh, we can tell that you're with the GIO and OIG. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, starting with you, Ms. Nowicki, thank you, and again, thank all the witnesses for the testimony, but th uh, thank you, Ms. Nowicki, as well, um, for talking about the 58 of the 68 recommendations that are still open, the 68 being that are older than four years. Describe for me in greater detail, if you would, for the committee, what makes you decide to keep certain ones open longer than four years and close other ones out? What criteria do you use? Um, well, typically, um, when recommendations are open longer than uh, longer in that window, or sometimes longer than four years, as you've said, um, we typically do that when we believe that there's some reason um, that those recommendations will be implemented. So, for example, there were, uh, I believe, two recommendations that we still have open right now from 2006. Um, We've recently learned that there is uh, those relation those uh, recommendations were related to uh, managerial cost accounting practices at the department. But we've recently learned that um, it's unlikely that the department would close those older recommendations. So we will probably um, close them on our end as unimplemented. No, it's true though that all 68 were agreed to by the Department of Education. They thought the 68 recommendations were a good idea. Yes or no? They have agreed. Uh, uh, they generally agreed with almost all of the recommendations that we made at the time they were made. Okay, and <clears throat> so the 58 still open. You're not driving whether some, something's still open or closed. The department is. They said no. We don't want it. This is older than four years. We're still not giving up on it. We still want to try to pursue it. So you have some evidence to that effect, so you keep it open. Is that accurate? Correct. Okay. Um, then with the ones that are still open, do you still follow up with them annually or what's the criteria for? Yes, so um, our policies and procedures require that for all open recommendations, we follow up at least annually um, and check in with the department on their their status and the progress of them implementing so our you, recommendations. Yeah, and, and from the introduction that the Chairwoman Fox um, elaborated on, you worked in the private sector and you've been doing this kind of work for how long? 17 years. What's your biggest frustration? given your experience or your top three? Um, I think, you know, for us, recommendations that remain open for longer periods of time represent a missed opportunity to improve um, outcomes on the ground for students and to, um, Im you know, improve efficiency in the working of federal government. Per your testimony, do you believe in federal government? Do I believe in the federal yeah. government? How big should it be? Is it too big now? I. No comment. No comment. <laughs> <clears throat> thank you for your testimony as well, Ms. T. Ty, thank you. Um, you indicated that, um, let's see. External audience. Let me just ask you what formal reporting and oversight mechanisms exist for the OIG to monitor department programs and services? Well, I think the, the, primary means we monitor the department is actually through our, our audit work. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is our, by, by annually deciding what areas we want to look at for the department through our annual work plan, and then, and then conducting those audits and inspections and, and other type of work is how we do our job. Um, it is certainly then up to the department to provide specific monitoring of the department's programs. And in your testimony, you mentioned uh, lack of staff, unquote, for, for, for doing the, reacting to your audits or doing their own internal audits. Can you elaborate on that? What do you mean by lack of staff? And are you suggesting that the bureaucracy get bigger? <laughs> well, I, I do think um, the department has a lot of responsibilities. And I think that um, you find people overworked there. I'm not being flippant. Seriously, I mean. Well, I, you know, we haven't done audit work specifically. I will say my impression. Yeah, a lot of people carry a, a, a lot of responsibility and are, in fact, working very hard. Uh, the department has uh, a lot of programs. It is not a really large department when you look at across the federal government, 
And I do think in the area of, of audit resolution that we have been talking about, um, I don't know if we have specifically sort of uh, looked at, I know there is staff in every program office that does handle audit resolution. There is an audit liaison and, and people who deal with, with audit resolution. Um, you know, sometimes they may carry other responsibilities. So I, um, um, I think that part of what we looked at, like in our 2012 audit, was, okay, you have staff here. You know, if, if you don't have enough, we at least need to, part of part of what our issue was. You need to train them. Uh, you also need to to make sure that they understand their obligations, that they understand what a OMB A50, you know, the OMB circular that 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 is, governs this area, you know, what that means to the department, to the responsibilities. And I think that that's an important part of the, the issue. My time's expired. Thank you.